Welcome to our latest video on the topic of physical properties of transition metal elements. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to describe typical physical properties of transition metals and be able to link these to their uses. You should also be able to explain the bonding that exists in transition metals and be able to use the metallic bonding model to explain why transition metals have these physical properties. And finally, you should be able to explain why the physical properties of transition metals differ from those of group 1 and 2 metals. So let's start by looking at the physical properties of transition metals. Transition metals exhibit typical physical properties of metals. For example, they're good conductors of both electricity and heat. They have high melting points. They're malleable, which means they can be hammered or bent into shapes easily. They're ductile, which means they can be drawn into wires. Now transition metals differ from the metals of groups 1 and 2 as they're harder and stronger than these metals, they have much higher melting points and boiling points, and they have much higher densities than the metals of group 1 and 2. Now in this video we're going to look at the bonding that exists in transition metals and the reasons why they have different properties to the metals of group 1 and 2. Now this table shows the physical properties of some transition metals compared to group 1 and 2 metals. And as you can see from this table, the transition metals that are highlighted in red have higher melting points, boiling points and densities than the group 1 and 2 metals. For example, transition metals tend to have very high melting points over 1000 degrees C they have very high boiling points and they have high densities. Transition metals are harder and stronger than group 1 and 2 metals and these differences in physical properties are down to the bonding that exists in transition metals compared to group 1 and 2 metals. All metals have metallic bonding but the bonding in transition metals is a lot stronger than the bonding that exists in group 1 and 2 metals. So now let's recap the bonding that exists in metals. Metals have metallic bonding, and metallic bonding consists of positive metal ions in a sea of electrons. And the metallic bond is the attraction between the sea of electrons and the positive metal ions. And all the properties of metals are due to this bonding. For example, Metals conduct electricity because they have a delocalized sea of electrons. Metals have high melting points because there's strong attraction between the positively charged ions and the delocalized sea of electrons. Metals are malleable because the ions are able to slide over each other. For the same reason, metals are ductile. Now it's important that you're able to link the bonding in metals with physical properties that they exhibit. Now the reason that transition metals have different physical properties to group 1 and 2 metals is because they have stronger metallic bonding. Now this is because the charge on the metal ions tend to be higher in transition metals. They have more delocalized electrons the 4s and the 3d electrons make up the delocalized sea of electrons and as a result the attraction between the delocalized sea of electrons and the positive metal ions is a lot stronger the metallic bonding is therefore much stronger in transition metals than it is in groups 1 and 2 and that's why transition metals are harder why they're stronger why they have higher melting points boiling points and densities So now let's look at some examples of transition metals. So the first example we're going to look at is copper, which has the symbol Cu. And copper is a very good conductor of heat and electricity. It's malleable, which means we can hammer it into different shapes. It's ductile, which means it can be drawn into wires. And it's got an attractive orangey-brown colour. And it has lots of uses. Now copper is used in electrical wiring because it's a good conductor of electricity and it's also ductile. It's also used in hot water pipes because it's a good conductor of heat. 
and it's also used in making pots and pans and kettles because of its attractive appearance and also because again it's a good conductor of heat. Now another example of a transition metal is iron and iron is extracted in the blast furnace from its ore and is used to make the alloy steel and steel is hard and strong and more versatile as it's an alloy compared to the metal iron and there are different types of steel and the different types of steel such as mild steel and high carbon steel cast iron and stainless steel all have different amounts of carbon in them and because of this they have different properties now steel has many uses is used to make bridges ships cars washing machines cookers etc the metal iron also has catalytic properties and is used as a catalyst in the production of ammonia. Now another example of a transition metal is titanium. Titanium is hard, strong, is resistant to corrosion and has a high melting point. It's also unusual for a transition metal because it has quite a low density compared to other transition metals. Now the fact that titanium has a low density, is strong and is resistant to corrosion means it tends to be used in the aerospace industry and also in artificial limbs and artificial hips. Now transition metals also find uses as catalysts. Both transition metals and their compounds have catalytic properties. They speed up chemical reactions. And iron is used as a catalyst in the production of ammonia, whilst transition metals such as nickel, platinum and palladium are used as catalysts in the hydrogenation of alkenes. And that reaction in particular is important in the margarine industry, where unsaturated oils are converted to saturated fat. Now in later videos, we'll be looking at the chemical properties of transition metals, and we'll be focusing in much more detail on the catalytic properties of transition metals and their compounds. Now we've learned at both GCSE and AS level that a catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction. And it does this by making the reaction go by a different reaction pathway or mechanism that has a lower activation energy. Now activation energy is the amount of energy required for a reaction to start and we can see in this slide that the activation energy is represented by Ea here and with a catalyst the activation energy is much smaller because the reaction has gone by a different reaction pathway or mechanism and that new reaction pathway has a lower activation energy. So now let's test your understanding of the physical properties of transition metals with some practice questions. So here's our first practice question. Read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question one says that the drawing shows a high quality wire used to make electrical connections on a stereo and that copper is used because it is a very good conductor of electricity. Now the first part of the question is asking you to describe the structure and bonding in a metal and it says that you may wish to draw a diagram to help you in your answer and this is a three mark question. Well to get the three marks you have to explain that metals are made up of a giant structure of positive ions, one mark for that, surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons, one mark for that, now the attraction between the two is called a metallic bond. So if you said that, you get the third mark. And you could draw a diagram showing the positive metal ions surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. Now question B is asking you to explain by reference to your answer in part A, why copper conducts electricity. And this is a one mark question. So you need to refer to the free or delocalized electrons. It is these delocalized electrons which allow the metal to conduct electricity. So there's one mark for that. And for part C, it asks you to explain by reference to your answer in part A, why copper is ductile. This is also a one mark question. So you need to say that the ions are able to slide or slip or move over each other. One mark for that. 
So now have a go at our second practice question. So in this question, we're asking you to explain why transition metals have higher melting points than group one metals. This is a three mark question. Read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So now let's go for the answer to question two. So you're asked to explain why transition metals have higher melting points than group one metals. And this is a three mark question. So you need to say that transition metals have higher charges on their ions, one mark for that. So therefore there's more delocalized electrons, the 4s and 3d electrons make up the delocalized sea of electrons, one mark for this. And therefore as a result of this, there's stronger metallic bonding. So this question is worth a total of three marks if you had all the relevant points here. Now that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be able to describe typical physical properties of transition metals and be able to link these to their uses. You should also be able to explain the bonding that exists in transition metals and be able to use the metallic bonding model to explain why transition metals have these physical properties. And finally, you should be able to explain why the physical properties of transition metals differ from those of group one and two metals. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radichemistry.